जयपुर अहमदाबाद दिल्ली में आपका स्वागत लखनऊ जंक्शन It was a chase that flattered to deceive Delhi. Were very much in the chase until the eighth over mark. They were one thirty one for three, but then two six seven was just too big a mountain to scale, and eventually they folded for one ninety nine a sixty seven run win for the Sunrisers Hyderabad. This is their fifth. They go up to ten points on the points table, a little bit closer to the Rajasthan Royals, a team in form. Jake Fraser McGurk made this chase entertaining at least in the first 10 65 of 18 62 of those coming off uh, fours and sixes Rishabh Pant uh, 44 runs in vain he looked a bit uneasy out there Abhishek Porel impressed her uh, came into bat much earlier than one would have thought uh, a lot of uh, fans perhaps expected Pant to come in earlier but it was Abhishek Porel who combined with Jake Fraser McGurk and gave us such a bit of a scare Natarajan best bowling figures in the IPL uh, for Natarajan a couple of wickets for ready as well mike mark and they bowled very intelligently a professional display from the sunrisers hyderabad pat cummins is growing in stature as a t20 captain or, a, or an ipl captain the result i suppose was a foregone conclusion or was it did you think the match was on at the eighth over mark of course 131 runs are ahead when somebody gets to on more than 250 and you are ahead of the asking rate at that point in time you have to tell yourself that they had a very good chance yep and i think those those were the overs that changed it 9 10 11 markande comes bowls a beautiful over gets a wicket the next over pat cummings bowls a great over then natarajan bowls a five run over and that's where the match effectively changed and i think that is the big thing that if here either you if you stop you're going to get wickets because there's so much scoreboard pressure new yeah. that one or two overs if there no uh, run scored not enough runs scored people will have to start taking risks as yes, gilly called the game uh, when we went for a quick bus com box at the halfway mark but you want to see the chasing team show a certain kind of intent and i'm sure ponting would have had a, a pep talk with the team with warner and co and prithvi shaw and young abhishek porel they came out with a certain intent which is admirable result aside Oh, that was, they had to. They they couldn't take any other option. But yeah, they would have, they would have believed from that twelve mentioned it at the halfway point that twelve over period where they were able to tie down uh, SRH batting. They they would have believed that got them back into the game. Yeah. So go out there with that intent, and and they certainly did that. It was a fine innings uh, from Jake Fraser McGurk. It was a little bit easy early. Then you know that second over from Washington Sunder. that was like kids cricket like it um that was i don't know why that that's the only blip on the pat cummins captaincy radar yeah but perhaps i'm being harsh because sunder uh, washington sunder did get that wicket yeah. so that's enough to lure you in to go again and uh credit to jake fraser mcgurk For all those who wrote off uh, the Delhi Capitals at the halfway mark uh, would have perhaps been surprised with what Prithvi Shaw did of the first four deliveries Uh, th- there's something about Prithvi Shaw when he gets going. Lasted only five balls, but four boundaries, and then the wicket ball. So clearly, the intent was very much there. No, the in- there's no doubt in their intent at all. I think they all went out there with intent. It's difficult to say Warner had or didn't have intent because he lasted just three balls. But all of them went out there to smash the ball, and I think they did an admirable job of it. Yep. I mean, Abhishek Porel didn't get off to a great start, but once he started timing the ball, he was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I think the big issue is that once. the squeeze came they couldn't absorb the pressure and the other big thing was they really needed big runs from christian stubbs and rishabh pant because if you see what happened what you had in the first innings was that you had a situation where right up front you had runs a lot of runs being scored the middle was stopped and then again towards the end you had shahbaz ahmed and all going for runs yeah. what happened here is they didn't get that second spurt yeah and i think there was one of the very crucial battle if you see before nitish reddy came into bowl they had basically they had spinners which had three spinners to look after eight overs so you had mayank markande you had shahbaz ahmed and your third spinner was uh, washington sundar washington sundar who bowled two who bowled two for 26 yeah. so th- at that point in t- uh, sorry he met for much, much more than that he went for 13 just 46 42 for 46 absolutely so you had to get rid of three overs so somewhere they had to get rid of three more overs from the spinners by the time the 12th 13th and 
Nitish Reddy comes in, bowls well, gets a wicket. That was the game. And for all those who switched off uh, at the halfway mark, missed out on watching uh, a rollicking innings from a young Aussie, Jake Frizzle McGurk, came into uh, bat at number three, lasted only 18 balls and he had 12 big shots of those 18. 62 of his 64 came, uh, 65 came of fours and sixes. Uh, you had a theory on, on, his, on his bat speed. You seem mighty impressed with him. Oh, beautiful swing of the bat. It's pretty much the same stroke to every delivery. No matter <laughs> yeah. where the ball is, yeah. he's set up, sort of just gets that front leg set, bat comes from up really high, and then he just, just brings it down on the plane that he needs to to try to meet the ball right in the middle, whether it's down low or up high or hook shot or pull shot. Um, it's pretty much a, just a set and forget um, style and almost baseball-like, and yep. he's doing it very, very well, so he gave him a chance. It's almost like he was sort of swatting flies. It's, it's a modern-day batting thing, isn't it? No, also, it's a very interesting thing you say because... Uh, there have been theories about this. Like, for example, at one time, and I'm going to a different sport totally, table tennis, you had a situation where a lot of the other team players, I mean, other country players would play against China, they attempt a lot of shots. And then they discovered the Chinese coaches would come and say, you're going to play just four shots, but you're going to play those four shots well. Yeah. So you practice, 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 get those four shots to 90, 95%. So I think somewhere Jake Fraser McGurk is following that. Okay, this is my go-to shot. And all I'll do is adjust it, but I know this so well that I can execute it with 80, 85, 90% accuracy. Classen's pretty similar too. Exactly. Yeah. Right, uh, 25 for 2, uh, uh, Delhi Capitals, and one might have thought the captain Rishabh Pant will come into bat at number 4. It wasn't Pant, it was in fact Abhishek Porel, and he, to be fair to him, he didn't disappoint. He was there, switched on, hitting the big shots, and he scored 42 of 22, strike rate 190. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty much upheld his part of the bargain, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, there was always a lot of conjecture over batting lineups of every franchise in there. We speculate why he didn't and he there and so on. There's such ta talent and firepower throughout the top six, generally, of every yeah. team. It's sort of, it's almost like take a number, boys, and whichever number you draw out, you can go out there. Yeah. And it, particularly in that chase. Yeah. Um, you just had to go one way. And, and he, as we've seen, made a better fist of it in the end than what Rishabh could. Yep. And, and Rishabh did, was on the receiving end of some pretty good bowling. Yep. I think, yeah, we'll get to their bowling shortly, I'm sure. Yeah, but Porel, I, I'm, I'm from the outside, a lot of people might indulge in conjecture saying, you know, a young Bengali boy perhaps enjoys uh, sort of Ganguly's trust and he's sort of made Dada proud. Hey, look, you can enjoy anyone's trust, but you're not going to go there and bat at number four unless Ponting and the court captain is also convinced sure. about it. So there's mm. no doubt about that. I think he also took a shine to the bowling of Shahbaz Ahmed, who's a fellow player from Bengal as yeah. well, and sort of really went after him. So I think that's it. You know, once he got settled, he had the attacking temperament and the mood. The only thing was if he could have gone on a bit further. Yeah. And I think that's what happened to them. McGurk you know, just faced 18 balls. Yep. Porel faced 22. So that's if those two could have gone on for another maybe 15, 20 balls, things could have been different. Credit to Mike Markande who bowled very, very intelligently. In fact, Taksar bowled uh, very intelligently as well uh, in the first innings. Uh, however, when you're chasing 267, safe to say that it's fair for fans to expect their biggest star to bat higher up. Although number three, number four did score the runs today. Rishabh Pant. Yeah, look, I'm saying Rishabh Pant's batting order, they must have looked at it. Look, one of the things they do look up a lot is matchups and all. Yeah. Who's doing what. But Pant still had enough balls. Given the circumstances, they still had enough balls. It's You are not going to look at this and say Pant did not have enough balls to influence a match or came in too late to influence a match. Sure. That didn't happen. Sure. He had enough opportunity. The fact is, it didn't come off. You could say partially it's, you know, he didn't look in the best of uh, form, but the bowling was also excellent and they varied it very well to him. And I thought, you know, Pat Cummings, both in his own bowling and the way he used Natarajan and Nitish Reddy and um, Bhuvi, Bhuvi was absolutely fantastic. Kili, would you have looked at the batting order differently or did DC do most things right? Uh, there's an argument for Rishabh to go up, but uh, maybe it was, I'm just trying to reflect on the the left-hand, right-hand combinations. Yeah, Pore left. If there was a bit of that, um, probably surprised. Uh, well, I mean, the one that really caught my surprise that Axel Patel didn't come up. That yeah, one's exactly. Quite that high. is the yeah, one that's, that was probably yeah. the bigger one that I thought. Well, hang on, you're losing a bit of firepower. But he hasn't really had an opportunity or hasn't slightly low on confidence these days. Yeah. So, it, and and we still don't. You know, it's hard to judge Rishabh yeah. at this point. Let's not 
forget yeah. where he's come from. Yeah. So we've got to allow him an element of time. Um, that to, They were maintaining the run rate. They were ahead of the run rate, but it's tough to do for 20 overs at that breakneck speed. One false move, Fraser McGurk. If he faces another 20 balls at that pace, he's 120 and, you know, they're probably going to canter along. Yeah. But one false move, and you made a point to me off air out the back about that margin for error in this day and age. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, that's what we were discussing, that one bad over, you've given one extra over, 30 runs gone, match can change. Mm. Yeah. And that's, that's the point, that because there's such a high margin of runs being scored, yep. one tactical decision wrong. Yeah, with difference. bad or ball. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, Pat Cummins got uh, pretty much everything right today. It was overs number 9, 10 and 11 is where uh, this Delhi chase really nosedived. That. That's something that uh, Joy Bharacharya alluded to in his opening comments. Uh, 131 after 8 and then Markande, Cummins and Natrajan just sucked the life out of this chase. Yeah, they sucked the life out of it. And then, you you know, once you start losing wickets and you know that 7th over, then as I said, Rishabh Pant actually walked in at the end of the 7th because... Yeah. He had, so he had 13 overs. So this talk about him not having enough mm. overs is not a case. I mean, so that's where we were. So given what we had under the circumstances, I think once the intelligence was under change, bowl, bowling changes, yeah. he had one over of Markande, got a wicket. He, he's not greedy. He's, yeah. he's made a mistake once giving that extra over to uh, up front to Washington. So he doesn't do it a second time. Yeah, yeah. He brings yeah. Natarajan. So the thing about captaincy is, one is that it is not just about making a mistake. It's also learning from your mistakes. Yeah. And that's what Pat Cummins did, does so well as an international captain and is doing so well as a T20 captain. Yes, 131 after 8 and then just uh, 68 odd in the remaining overs. Their innings folded at 19.1. So a uh, great start, 14.66, then 12.5. However, they lost, uh, they kept losing wickets, which I suppose caused the 5.6 between 11 and 15, Gilly. Yeah, lost those couple, but uh, you'd still think that they might be able to maintain a better run rate than that. It, it, was, it was class bowling. It was absolutely outstanding. Uh, Pat Cummins' fingerprints were all over that game plan with the ball. Yep. No doubt about it. Yep. That, that, that pays off if we reflect back on the Delhi, <clears throat> Delhi seam bowlers or quicker bowlers. They, if they did bowl slower balls, they certainly didn't do it with the effect that that Sunrisers team Yep. carried it out right across, right from the very beginning. Yep. Um, so they didn't go pace on with the ball new, trying to swing it or anything. They just said, right, we're going to consistently challenge you with a blend of wide wide Yorkers, wide stuff dragging you, don't getting into your hitting arc, and then a couple with slower balls. So um, it was be beautifully executed. Jake Fraser McGurk played a great innings against some, some bowling that he dined out on early to get his kick started. Yeah. He hit some nice shots, no doubt, after that. But but the the bowling unit, that was outstanding. You could see that Cummins had in, instilled in them a, a philosophy and they were uh, very, very keen and, and able to follow. Absolutely. Who bowls those overs? If you see that 11 to 15, two of them are Natarajan. Yep. There's Cummins and there's Bhuvi. Yeah, your best bowls. Okay. And Nitish Reddy. All of them get in. Nitish Reddy comes in, bowls a very useful over. Yeah. moment that over is done, Cummins is relieved. Now those three overs as a spinner, he doesn't have to now get rid of. Because now bowling a spinner to somebody like a Rishabh Pant, who's going to take chances now, 13, 14 overs are done, strike rate's going high. They didn't really want to take a chance with the spinner again. Yeah. Also they that Rishabh Pant was sort of running out of partners. I mean, they don't have a player like Tim David uh, to sort of partner Rishabh Pant. So I suppose Cummins knew and therefore he got his, his, his bowling choices right. Now just the one wicket for Bhuvneshwar Kumar, he hasn't had a great IPL yet, but just the way he got David Warner out will do his confidence a world of good. Absolutely. And he's, he's a class bowler. The truth is he's a class bowler and now given what, what they've done with what Cummins is bowling at the death, what they can afford to now do is finish Bhuvi perhaps earlier than they need to. I mean, Bhuvi's not at his best in the, I believe, in the 16th and 20th overs. If they can now give him two, maybe give him even a third over up front if they see, because now Natarajan is starting to deliver consistently for them. Yep. So if Nitish Reddy, Natarajan can start bowling here and Cummins and Natarajan can finish, then it opens up Bhuvi totally. And Bhuvi with three overs especially, see, this is not the most ideal ground to, you know, for the ball to swing, but you are going to go to places where the ball is really going to move around. I think that's a good point. In other circumstances, in other... In another environment, they will definitely more heavily back movie at the top and not leave him a couple at the back. Yeah. But uh, it was quite unique tonight. 
Uh, clearly, uh, Natarajan with the most wickets, 4 for 19. However, it was Mike Markande who got the two danger men out in uh, consecutive overs. In the seventh over, uh, he got he got rid of uh, Jake Fraser McGurk. And in the ninth, which was his second, he got Abhishek Porel. Bowled only two overs, but did the job, Gilly, by getting yeah. those two in form batters out. He sure did. Uh, there's no doubt, you know, we made mention early in the night that he picked up uh, Virat against RCB. So he's getting some nice scalps under his belt. And. You know, 13 and over, um, big deal. Yep. You've got two there. Yep. You stem the flow of runs and you open it up for your team and then the rest of your bowling unit, that's what it's all about, hunting as a pack, the rest Still of the fit. bowling unit went whoomp and just came in and they were all over him like a, like a cheap suit. Is Pat Cummins going to get a thank you note from the BCCI? I think thanks for using Nitish Kumar Reddy as a bowler. India is searching for a medium pacer, batter, all rounder kind Look, of player. After November 19th, don't expect too many thank yous from <laughs> the BCCI to Pat Cummins. <laughs> you just ruined the biggest party on the planet. So, no. Oh, I was, but yeah. uh, no, the jokes aside, look, I think he's been fantastic. I mean, see, a lot of so much of, especially young players, and you've seen it, and of course, uh, Gilly's done so much of that himself is inspiring young kids to play at the level that you know they are capable of, yeah. but they don't believe in themselves. Yeah. And Pat Cummins is doing such a fantastic job of that. Yeah. Know. It's just amazing to see that. Yeah. Also, uh, Natarajan among the wickets uh, got the back four towards the end, cleaned up uh, the tail of, uh, of the Delhi Capitals. These are his numbers, his best ever um, IEPL figures. Now, courtesy, th thanks to the batters of SRH, the bowlers were able to sort of bowl themselves in and find yep. form. This was almost going to be the fourth time that SRH would concede 200 plus. The innings folded at 199. So, huge boxes ticked from an SRH bowling point of view tonight? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, it's, a, it's, it's worthy of a, an observation to look at the totals that they've conceded and the runs they've given up in this tournament, no doubt. But I think it's all only relevant in comparison to the runs you scored. And of course, the, the KKR game, they let that get away, but uh, it was, uh, it's all relative. And you only need one more than the opposition. So whether it's 400 versus 399 or whatever, it, you take into account conditions, how it all went. So, and in a tournament like this, in this format, one, very unlikely you're going to win every game. Yep. And two, very unlikely that you're going to dominate every win. Yeah. There's going to be 50-50 moments throughout matches, and it was there tonight when the Delhi were on target, but the skill, whether it's uh, Markande with his leggies and then the, the nous of Cummins to, to jump in like we just mentioned, they're the 50-50 moments and the, and the more, um, the hungrier team, the sharper team will, will prevail in those tight times. Exactly. You know, what he's saying also, Gilly, if your target is 180, Okay, does Jake Fraser McGurk necessarily bat that way? Maybe Jake Fraser McGurk does because does. he is what he yeah, is. Maybe Porel does but, it. But everyone doesn't. Yeah. So the truth of it is, if your target is high, the opposition team will take more risks. Yeah. The day they'll come off, they'll also come close to your total. Yeah. That's exactly the point. How much risk you take is totally a product of what you're chasing. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. So if you're, if you're going to chase 100, how many risks are you going to take? Yeah. You're just going to pat the ball back. Then you can turn around and say, my bowlers have great numbers. But your graders have great numbers because your batters didn't have great numbers. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so, all, it's all relative. It's yep. all relative. Right. Uh, fifth win for uh, the Sunrisers Hyderabad. They inch closer to RR who are at number one of the points table. A pretty solid, positive, happy, healthy net run rate uh, for the Sunrisers Hyderabad as well. A 67 run win for SRH takes them to number two uh, on this points table which sees RR at one with six wins as you can see. Now SRH clearly a team that will want to keep going. Are, are there any other areas of concern that you reckon Pat Cummins, and, Pat Cummins and co. will be looking at after this win? Look, everyone will want to, there are little changes everyone wants to do. But I don't think there's one single glaring weakness. My only point is that you're going to have days when this SRH batting unit will be 30 for 4. Because that's the way they bat. They take risks, so 1 out of 10 days, very much like the England batting attack that you had for a while, yep. finish. They, they're going to have days when they collapse because they mm. bat taking a lot of chances. Mm. But that does that also means that there are days where they'll be like today they're 100 odd and six overs so that's that's the balance that you choose and that's the path pat cummins and srh has chosen it's a good position to be in isn't it gilly at the halfway mark after having played yeah. seven you won five you're pretty much on course uh, for the playoffs rajasthan hyderabad looking the most likely is there a team from the bottom half that you think 
will uh, surge have have this surge that takes them to the top four? Uh, look, uh, before I get to that, I'm just realising Delhi played eight now. I was sort of for some reason in my mind thought after tonight it was genuinely everyone had played seven, but of course Kolkata had a bit of a late slow start by way of fixtures, and Delhi are in they're in big strife now. They, it's not over, but they are. They've got work to do, big work to do. So uh, uh, who can get up there? Well, look, yeah, Mumbai with that extra game in hand ahead of Delhi, they're, they're obviously still there. Uh, but I think the team's, you know, it's cutthroat now for that bottom four. Yep. And uh, happy sailing for the top two teams there, particularly um, Rajasthan with that extra win, uh, the six from seven. So they'll be flying. Hyderabad, their next game is against the team right at the bottom. They play tomorrow, Bengaluru, but uh, who knows what frame of mind they'll be in when they fly to Hyderabad and take on what will be a very confident outfit. So if Hyderabad can get that one tucked away, then they're really starting to sort of think about finals. Joy, we're at exactly at the halfway mark, 35 leave games done. Uh, do you see the top four changing at all? Yes, I do. I, I genuinely, I feel that uh, Mumbai is probably the team with the best chance of a surge. Definitely, because... They are just, they got two, then they got stopped in one, then they, again they've got a solid resounding win. I think with Bumrah bowling the way he is, with the kind of batting unit they have, I think they are the one team you're looking at saying, and one of those teams, you're going to see a couple of drop-offs. I think at this point in time, SRH has that momentum. Gujarat, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Rajasthan has that momentum. And I have to say, Kolkata is looking as if it has that momentum. Yeah. But that fourth place, I think Mumbai is going to challenge for. Mm. SRH uh, pretty much uh, on song and on track to qualify for the playoffs at the halfway mark with five wins. Uh, today was uh, full of lots of individual performances. Abhishek Sharma, Travis Head. You saw Markande bowl really well. Four wickets for Natarajan. Um, a lovely cameo from Nitish Reddy. A couple of wickets for him as well. Uh, tough to pick uh, the carrier room air conditioner coolest moment of the match. Which one is it for you? It's uh, a blend of Pat Cummins and Nitish Kumar Reddy, just the captain going, seizing that moment, that opportunity, going, right, there's an opportunity to get this guy introduced with ball in hand, that we've done a great team effort to sort of just sway the tide our way. He pounced and it resulted in a wicket. So that, that, oh, I thought that was really cool. Great captaincy, um, great uh, match awareness for, for Nitish to be ready to go when he was called on. Yep. And... Uh, no, I, I thought that was a fantastic moment. Joy for you? Well, I have to choose another Nitish Reddy moment as well. And this is the 17th over where Kuldeep Yadav is bowling and he's bowling beautifully. And he sees Nitish Reddy changing stance to do the reverse. Mm -hmm. And he rushes, tries to rush the ball past the off stump. And he still manages to connect it beautifully for a six. And I thought uh, he looked there two or three shots. There's that shot over long on yeah. and there's this one cover drive. There are times he looks like a really special cricketer. Nitish is ready for the big stage. Yeah. Uh, a lot, uh, lots of our viewers were ready with their choice as well for the carrier room air conditioners. Coolest moment of the match. Uh, we've got uh, three of those uh, to feature on the show. Shashank Sharma, absolute carnage by Travis Head and Abhishek. They're just complimenting and competing with each other for scoring sixers and fours. Also competing to score the fastest half century uh, of this season. Uh, 131 run partnership. Sharma and Head, the deadliest duo in this IPL? Yeah, at the moment. Yeah, no one wants to bowl to them. It's uh, frightening. And, and they're carrying out everything. They've just reinforced the statement that Pat Cummins said after the last win yep. that we made reference to pre-game yep. about hopefully we're intimidating teams before we even get to them. Yep. Now, more than 450 runs scored in this match. I wonder if uh, any of our viewers picked uh, a bowling performance as uh, one of the coolest moments of the match. Let's find out what the second one is. Uh, let's pull it up. Sadinu Kavasika Fonseca. I hope I pronounced that right. Yes, he's picked uh, Kuldeep and Markande. Brave bowling is my favourite moment of the good match. Good call. Really good call. Good call, yeah, yes. Nice. Right. We've got, we've got one more. Just one more. This one's from uh, Mubassir Prachar. And he reckons Pat Cummins with strategic acumen inserted himself into the attack when Delhi's run rate was higher than the required rate, conceding just two runs in the over. He altered Delhi's aggressive batting, altering the course of the match. Pat Cummins clearly, yes, Sundar was expensive. The first two overs did not go with a set plan, was flexible enough uh, with his choices, didn't let ego come in the way and bowl the tough overs and, and pull the match back. Yep, absolutely. I thought he was fantastic. And 
His bowling also, he's, I mean, Pat's bowling has not been, he hasn't captained before in the IPL, but his bowling also has never been something, he's never replicated his international form in ODI and Test cricket, which what he does here. This year, I feel he uses the slow ones better. I feel he uses the slow bouncer better. I feel he uses the angle better. And I think he's done something which you alluded to the previous time, that he's realized that his test match ball is also a very useful ball if you use it in the right circumstances. And he's doing that really well. And bowling really nice Yorkers too. Yes. Just not, They're not boomer-like, yeah. but, but they're really nice Yorkers. So... You know, mid over a Yorker and then a slower ball wide. So he's just keeping the batter guessing. There's no certainty what's coming. And then he can bowl a hard enough bouncer to suddenly surprise you. So, But he's hitting a hard length. Also, he's able to smile under pressure. And yeah. uh, Pat Cummins is proving to be quite the cool captain uh, at IPL 2024. And uh, he's also offering uh, the league a lot of these carrier room air conditioners. Coolest moment of the match. Send us your entries as well for what your favourite coolest moments of the match are. The IPL uh, League stage gets into the second half. Uh, we will see a double header tomorrow, match number 36, between a team that's doing really, really well. The Kolkata Knight Riders very much in the top half of the table. They are up against uh, the hapless looking Royal Challengers, Bengaluru now. KKR lost to RR from a winning position by just two wickets. Joy, it will, it will really hurt them. Most things are going right for them. Yeah, that'll hurt them. That'll hurt them because they had a chance to go to first place. And that would have been first place after a long, long... I think after 2014, you've never seen that rate of scoring from KKR early in the tournament. That, So, I think that will hurt them because it got away from them. Yeah. But then they, if they look at it very rationally, they'll realise they sneaked one against SRH exactly in this him situation. Yeah. So, once they got across the line, once they just fell back. And I think uh, they'll, they have enough time to now set that aside and say... Let's go forward because I think what they have to do and I know Gotham is very aware of this as a captain is, he is not even going to be telling them we need to qualify because the way you look at it is say, guys, we need to be top two. We need to give ourselves two chances. Yep. So, he'll keep that pressure on them saying top two, top two, top two. They know if they win tomorrow, they go back to top two. They play at the Eden Gardens. They've scored 200 plus twice and twice they've allowed the opposition to score as many as well. Mitchell Stark is a huge, huge concern for the Kolkata Knight Riders. What's happening with him? Uh, what he showed promise against LSG it was, wasn't he? Yep. Yeah, three uh, two or three, three for. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's always going to be a, uh, a risky return sort of bowler. That is stri he's a striker yep. that brings uh, scoring opportunities. So, um, but I think he'll, he, he'll still just to do, try and do what he, what he does. Yep. Um, just like to see him, Dooley mentioned it a number of nights ago, just like to see him use his short ball a bit yep. better. He could have watched, hopefully watched Pat Cummins tonight, totally different styles of bowlers, but just that um, change-ups, taking pace off, but then use your bumper and use it really well. Changes. Can they look at beefing up their batting? Nitish Rana seems to be okay. So, could they look at bringing him, bringing him in uh, for Venkatesh Iyer? Maybe since Ankrish Raghuvanshi is, has solidified his position at number three, can they look at making that change? Ayer out, Rana in? Look, uh, Ayer, Rana, yes, I think at this point in time, Venkatesh Ayer hasn't set, you know, their team Venkatesh, that is, not the captain's way as Ayer. Yeah, Venkatesh, he hasn't set them on fire. But look, I don't think that batting has been their weakness. I think their weakness has been that Stark has not given them enough with the ball. That's something that they'll be worrying about. I would not be surprised if they decide to, you know, go for a chance and take the extra spin in Suyar Sharma. Against RCB, against Virat Kohli, you need an extra spinner. Yeah, play the extra spinner and you've got enough bowling. Because if you see the fast bowlers, Weber Varoda, Harshit Rana, you still have somebody like an Andre Russell who can give you 2-3 overs. So you still have 10 overs of fast bowling. You have a banker in Sunil Narayan. You have uh, Chakravarti who's bowling well. They could really, really look at Suyar Sharma. Remember, generally, in his heyday, Gotham used to like a three spinner lineup. Mm. It yeah. might just work for them. Now, they're up against a, a hapless looking, lost looking RCB at number 10. Seven matches done, six losses, just the one win. A team that has Virat Kohli, the best batter on the planet. Uh, currently the best finisher on the planet, DK. There's, there are rumours about him being okay to go to the World Cup. We won't go into that. But the bowlers are just not turning up. No. No, they've been 
absolutely <laughs> decimated a number of occasions yep. and uh, confidence must be at an all-time low yep. after that last outing. So uh, good for them to get away from the home ground, I think, and, yep. and just change as good as a holiday, maybe travel together, freshen up a bit. Uh, there was some promising signs with, uh, with the bat in hand, but the bowling is, um, yeah, they've just got to work out exactly what their formula is, uh, who, who they're going to play, um, get that balance right. So it'll be interesting to see who they stack up with. RCB play in uh, in their green jersey tomorrow. Maybe that'll bring a bit of luck uh, for uh, for the Bengaluru team. Virat Kohli likes it, the in-gardens. Now, they've, t- they've tried pretty much everything they could. Glenn Maxwell opted out in yeah, their last Yeah, they've game. tried everything. Yeah. Even, you know, Go- Virat and Gautam have tried being friends as well. So For a change, yeah. That. Which so is that's good to see. Change. It's wonderful it's to, see. to see. So, you know, look, they tried everything. And I think that's a point that, uh, you know, if you're Virat, you have to feel for him all. It's it's easy to say that, you know, 16 years, they haven't managed to get a title. But the amount of pressure on that man, because everyone thinks that he can deliver. And it's not that he's do, not doing enough for the team. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult, difficult situation to be in. And uh, there's a phenomenal amount of pressure. No other the stars in either lineups. Uh, you've got to give me your players to watch out for. I, I want to have a look at the RCB team. I'd love yep. to have a look at the RCB team because I, I feel their bowling, they can, they use, I would definitely again go back and say that if you've got Maxwell is now no longer here, you've got to give Will Jacks a bit more of a run. You've got Duplessis out there. I think Topley and Lockie, I'd go with both of them out there. You, This is the Eden Gardens. You could possibly play another spinner out here. And I think you are in a situation where I mean, you have to bring back bowlers. Akash Deep. So, say maybe a Mike Dagger in for, say, Vijay Kumar Vaishak? An option? Left arm spinner? I think you'll need a spinner. I think you'll definitely need a spinner under this, the circumstances. Because remember, you're not getting any overs from Maxi. Will Jacks will give you a bit of spin. So will Lombrod. But, you know, you're not getting any others. Uh, I, I would like to see another quality top, top line s- spinner in, not a, uh, somebody who's a replacement. So, yeah, definitely Mike Dagger. Key players to watch out for. Uh, oh, I'm looking forward to seeing, which you made reference to it, and we don't need to really unpack it, but did DK say I am available? He's been quoted saying, if I have to... Oh, if, if I have to go, I'll go. I'm asked, <laughs> I may, I may be making the mistake of misquoting him, so apologies if I'm yeah, doing we're, that. We're not sure, we will we? get a confirmation from DK. He's our very own exactly. uh, Craig Buzz panellist. So, yeah. DK, World Cup, you reckon? Oh, no, what I was going to say, if, if indeed he had made that statement, which again, I don't know if he has, but if he had made that statement, it'd be interesting to see then how, how he goes about his business and with, if there's more focus on it. Well, it's, it's swirling around, isn't it? So is it building um, expectation on his performances? So I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what, I just love watching him play. Wouldn't it be a great story, DK, World Cup? Uh, or are I we mean, getting a bit too far ahead of ourselves? You might be getting ahead of ourselves, but look, it's a romantic thought, <laughs> going out there one last he, time, giving it a whack. He could wicketkeep and have the earpiece in and cross in the studio. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, he can do, can. Yeah. yeah, from the World Cup. So the, the, the only question is, <laughs> look, he's anyway going to the US. He has a visa. The question is, does he have to carry his kit yeah. or his yeah. 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 Does he have the to book his own per, flight? The only person worried about at this point in time about yeah. this is Ajay Shamachandran, <laughs> who's the head of broadcast for the ICC, <laughs> who's saying, hold on, I could lose a commentator here. Yeah. The right. other one I'm looking for, Rinku Singh. I want to see him. Okay, for you? Good call because Rinku is just, he's been nursing an injury. He's not had enough time the rest yeah. of them doing. Uh, look, as I said, I want to see Stark perform. Stark has to perform for them. And I think this is a good match for him to come back and show what he's doing. Because at the business end of the tournament, they'll need him to be there. Mm. And on the other side, I'd say that uh, I'd go for Faf again. Somebody right up at the top. Not he's a captain, not really done what he's capable of doing. Even the run rate's not where he, it normally is. So, yeah, I'd love to see Faf do well for them. On form, KKR start favourites. RCB at number 10. They've already played seven matches. They've got to uh, win their next seven to have a shot at the playoffs. Uh, Joy, what's that number? 16, is that the number that gets them to the playoffs? I think 16 is a safe number given the fact that there's quite a bit of uh, teams are closely together. 16 should get them across. 8 and 6 should get them across. You reckon seven and seven? Funny things are known to happen in sport. You're sitting beside a gentleman whose team was three and seven and made seven and seven and made mm. the playoffs. What is it? Four wins, four losses, win, loss, win, loss, and then the oh, trophy? That was, no, no, that that was the year one before. in South Africa. Oh, okay. but this was the year after where we went on a. 
So a basically, the last four games and snuck in. So can I tell you how uh, this man, gentleman, changed this story, entire history of KKR? Go on. So he is three and seven. Who is seven and four? Delhi is seven and four under Gautam Gambhir. Wow. Okay. Delhi goes seven and seven. They go from three and seven to seven and seven. They qualify. Okay, on superior run rate. Okay. They go through. Delhi decides they need to move on as captain. Make Seva captain next year. Gautam Gambhir goes to the auction. KKR picks him up. <laughs> and you have two championships in four years. All these stories are interlinked. It's a complex web of stories and, and decisions mm -hmm. that were taken behind the scenes. And Mr. Gilchrist's contributions to the IPL are not known enough to the world. Maybe you will discover those over the course of the next few days on Crick Bus. Mm -hmm. It's a double header Sunday. The next match will be played uh, in Punjab. It's Punjab versus... Uh, uh, the Gujarat Titans being captained by a Punjabi boy from Fazilka, Punjab. Shubman Gill's Gujarat Titans take on Shikhar Dhawan's uh, Punjab Kings. Now, Punjab, uh, things haven't gone their way. All of their matches have gone to the last over. They've lost five close games. I've got to say as a fan that they've been the most entertaining side in the IPL. It's just sad that results haven't gone their way. Been enthralling cricket to watch. Yep. Um, really, really engaging. You're, you're really not sure which way it's going to go. And of course, they've unleashed a couple of wonderful finds none the least uh, ashatosh that's just been a, a tremendous yep. journey to be on watching him go about his business so uh yeah yeah they'll be so frustrated but who's to say they can't in the back end just get over the line on those ones and all of a sudden they get that that momentum but entertaining to watch bowling letting them down arshdeep karan not much i think there. what's letting them down is really their top order batting okay perhaps you see they have to get shikhar has been injured uh, Johnny Bairstow gave them nothing. Last match they tried really to so of course he's just had one match. He didn't really get anything out of there. But Prap Simran, all these players need to give them more up front. Mm -hmm. And I still feel, given everything that's happening, Ashutosh and Shashank are batting too low. And yep. the last two matches they nearly changed, but they're just batting way too low. So I think all those changes need to come. But most importantly, the international batters and uh, Shikhar Dhawan have to put up their hand and say, we are also going to give you runs up front. Right now, it's the Ashutosh Sharma, Shashank Singh show. They, they tried Karan and Prapsimran at the top. It didn't work. No runs from the top three at all. Uh, do they change that? Do they give Russo another game? What do they do? Lots of trouble uh, with the top order. Yeah, you've got to give him another game. One, one goes. Not enough. Uh, well, is, that's um, also thinking of the balance of the team, understanding that Shikhar's not playing. I yeah. think it was probably at least another few days before he was going to be available, it yep. seemed, uh, from their announcement three or four days ago. Uh, yeah, you've got to go Riley again. Uh, he needs to be switched on. Yep. He copped a ripping delivery, there's no doubt about that, but you've just got to be really switched on. Uh, been waiting that long for an opportunity, got to be uh, raring to go. So I would, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what batting order. They might put him up to open and then get Curran back down in that sort of middle order where he's been around four and five, hasn't he? Gujarat Titans uh, were knocked out for 89 in their last game. Uh, there's, there's enough and more uh, potential or talent in that lineup. They've got to be able to shrug it off, saying one off. They'll shrug it off because they have a great, great uh, coaching staff, backroom establishment yep. who's very calm. They take wins and losses well. They move on very well. Great atmosphere in that. But I still feel they're a fragile batting unit. Uh, exactly what we were discussing, if you remember that, you know, and now the Millers come back. And if Miller's not being able to give them runs, then they're in a lot of trouble. Because basically, they are back end. They're two bookends of that entire batting. Yep. You have Shubman Gill out here and you have basically David Miller. Yep. And these two have to perform for them. They're expecting runs from Rashid. Hardly anything that's happened in the middle order. Expect more from Abhinav Manohar. Would you make any changes to their, to their batting that's sort of let them down a little bit? Sandeep Warrior uh, came into the bowling in that last game. Uh, picked up uh, two for 40 in three. Would you give him another game? Any other changes, Joy? I'm, I'm just saying, I still believe that Omar Zai gives them better balance instead of Spencer. Uh, if they insist, if they want to keep playing Rashid Khan and Noor Ahmed, Spencer has to sit out, Omar Zai have to, has to play. They have to get one more batter in there. They just look too far, far too exposed as a batting unit. Kelly, changes? Uh, nothing that jumps out. That's, that's, that's a fair call. It's an yep. interesting call. And I, th I would be sticking with Sandeep Warrior. I thought he shows oh. enough just to 
keep him encouraging and, and, and yeah, he showed glimpses of that he could be a really damaging, impactful player. Players to watch out for? I'm going to be very boring. Shubman Gill. <laughs> because <laughs> if he doesn't perform, he's got a chance to go back and play in Punjab. Yeah. So there'll be, there'll be a lot of support for him as well. It'll be delightful to watch him do well. Yeah, for you? Yeah, Miller. He's back on home turf to an extent as well, isn't he? Having yeah. spent time up there, was he was around when I was there. Actually, we got him in, uh, but yeah, he was he was a little bit unlucky. He got that inside edge onto the back leg, and then Richard takes a blinder. So first game back, he'll be better for the run. Mm. So look out for him. Points table, bottom half is where uh, these two teams find themselves. Uh, just above RCB, take a look at that. Eight and nine. Uh, three for Gujarat, two for Punjab. They should have won many, many more of those close games, but they haven't. Gujarat have got to get a move now. Joy, yeah, this is where they've got to get going. This is what they've got to... I mean, this is the next two, three games are going to decide a lot of... Because right now they're all bunched up. Remember, between three and four victories, you have a good seven teams sitting in that area. Just three and four. Yeah. I and sort of, I relate to Gujarat, Punjab, Bengaluru because I find myself at the bottom of another points table which is, I suppose, more important than this points table <laughs> because we get really competitive in this building with our predictions. Gilly um, came very close to hitting a bullseye today. Yeah. Uh, did he, did he not? Uh, is his position stronger than it was? Uh, where are you, Gilly? No, no movement. No I'm, movement. I'm, mm. the right, I'm on the right side of the table there, but uh, well, the left side actually, but it's the correct side to be on if you want to be in the running. But uh, yeah, a teaser today, but won't get greedy. Joy? I, I'm just happy where, as long as I'm on the left, I'm yeah. okay. And I don't think I'll be on the left very long. Because You're above an ICC Hall of Famer and Lisa Staliker. You're <laughs> above Mohammad Shami, Michael Vaughan, Ashes winning captain. And yeah. you're, you're above... Triple World Cup winning man sitting alongside you, Joy. Well done. Absolutely. I'll, I'll take it for... I should retire immediately. <laughs> this is the first... This is the first time, just thanks to this table, this is the first time that panellists on Crick Buzz Live are saying, I don't do any more work. Let me sit at well home done. at least have a chance. Well done. But what's the, what's the best thing about this uh, points table is that we're all being led by the amazing Saimi Kale. Yeah. Absolutely. She's teaching us a thing or two about getting predictions right. So yeah. absolutely, we need, we need tuitions from Siamik here. We also need uh, the answer to Joy Factor. It was a tricky one that uh, Mr. Bharacharya uh, gave us with that stern look on his face. Uh, Joy, all yours. Uh, it was Rashid Khan for Afghanistan, Ian Greg for Australia, Wakar for Pakistan, Graham Smith for South Africa. I think uh, you've guessed, Giri, who bought well, it. It's about, right? It's about captaincy. Yep. It's about the youngest test captains for various countries because he'd know Ian Craig was yeah. literally 20-odd when he was captain of Australia, 20, 21, 22. Uh, the one for India, of course, is the Nawab of Patawdi. Mm. That is the correct answer. Mansoor Ali Khan Patawdi, the youngest test captains it was. Uh, a lot of you send in your tweets, but we can pick only one winner for a uh, thumbs up or possibly a flying kiss from Joy and uh, Adam Gilchrist. Uh, Rajesh Reddy is the lucky winner, well, gentlemen. Uh, well Rajesh Reddy is well done. He's, he's won quite a few before as well. Yep, yep. But please do not promise flying kisses and all this on it's my It's been a while since the Asia Cup. What is this Why flying you kiss? What is the flying kiss? Oh, right. Yeah, I could see, envisage the big fella flying across. <laughs> no, no, no. Just the kiss flies. <laughs> okay. Enough. Uh, well done, Mr. Reddy. Well done. We are done for the day. Doubleheader coming up on Quick Buzz tomorrow in English and Hindi. Our coverage starts at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, in the company of uh, two very talented anchors, Gaurav Kapoor and Sai Mike. So do join them. Enjoy the show. Uh, see them at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Goodbye and good night. <laughs> Delhi में आपका स्वागत। लखनऊ जंक्शन।